How does a company like Microsoft take six existing events and combine them into one larger event? I'm Joe English with Event Marketer Magazine, and today we go behind the scenes with Microsoft Ignite. Thanks for talking with us. My pleasure. Microsoft Ignite, it's a big deal that you've brought all these events together under one roof. Tell us, how, where, where did this start? The company went through an organizational transformation under Steve Ballmer uh, to move to one Microsoft. We went from separate product groups with separate P&Ls and separate marketing teams doing all of their own things, et cetera, and we moved to one company focus. Uh, and and I, I, I do believe that without that corporate transformation, the event transformation wouldn't have been possible or maybe not even necessary to be honest. I, mean, I fully believe that corporate strategy translates into marketing strategy, translates into an event strategy, translates into an event experience. And, and if you're disconnected in any one of those, you have a bit of a problem. So as the company started to shift to one Microsoft, to a more, um, we are Microsoft, not just Windows or Office or Azure or Skype or Xbox or, 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 and move to this and, and, and thing. You, you saw the change in our advertising where the commercials are Microsoft commercials, not just Xbox commercials. And so that corporate transition started a process of looking across our events as a portfolio and saying, what are we doing? What might we do? What could we do? What should we consider doing? Yeah, we did things a lot differently. There's a historically more of a command and control way, and this is true not just for events, but at Microsoft, right? It's an evolving company and it was run one way for a long time and it's evolved over time to become what it is today. Same with the events. We had a very command and control model with a very clear head and then kind of division of labor on down the stack. This is much more of a collaboration between multiple groups. We looked at a, our, our events across a couple of uh, axes on a chart. We said, what events are one product and what events are one Microsoft? And what events are awareness and what events are loyalty? And where does everything fit on that? And we found it in the bottom right corner, which was the one product advocacy loyalty side, there were a number of events around specific products. There was an, ex uh, an, an exchange event, there was a link event, there was a uh, SharePoint event, there was tech ed, which was a bit further up. It was more of a one Microsoft, but it was still advocacy loyalty. And we said, well, these have more in common than they have different. What would it look like if these programs came together into something more Microsoft-centric than product-centric? And that's where the idea of Ignite came from. Microsoft Ignite is a consolidation, let's say, of a bunch of different events. And you owned one of those constituent events going into this, the Tech Ed. Yep. So let's, let's go back to the first, the first time you heard that they were going to take your event and fold it into this event. What was, what was that conversation like for you? You start with some trepidation, because yeah. first you got to deal with your internal politics, and then you start thinking about the external, uh, how this is going to look, how people are going to react to it. And TechEd specifically is an interesting case because it was the biggest of all the events, just in terms of sheer size. So you're kind of thinking, it, then you start thinking, are we going to be the ones pulling this wagon, or how are we going to all partner on this thing? At some point, you start looking at the actual business outcomes you're trying to achieve, and, you, and what you start to see, you know, when you get over your possessiveness of what you've had, you start to see we're actually missing a lot of things. We're not touching entire parts of the business with our conference because they're doing it on their own, and they have to say the same thing. You look at it and go, if we partner, we can really be a lot more effective. We can raise the level of who's actually going to be a part of this thing, both from an external and internal perspective. And that's kind of when you start going, all right, I'm, I'm on board. I'm ready to roll with this thing and I want to I help lead it. We wanted to really refocus, um, not only on skill building and networking and community building, which is what a lot of every single one of the events did, um, which is super, super vital, but also making sure that we are looking at ways to help our partners feel their business, um, help our sales team have the right customer conversations so as people are trying to drive their business forward, like that we're here and the event is a place for them to have that conversation and come together as one. There's over a thousand sessions at the event. Um, there's a great diversity. We're finding that the people who want to go deep in one area can do so. The people who want to go a little bit broader can do so. We did some, I think, amazing work with our partners and our team on how we designed our creative and the things that we have placed. Um, so when people walked in, immediately you saw people taking pictures, taking selfies, like looking at it. So I think that was definitely a proud moment that I had and I, it was fun to watch the attendees like really enjoying it. The other goosebump moment is this hall. This expo hall is, is amazing. 
you know, the way it lays out and the design. And again, when you watch the expressions of your attendees coming in and just the feedback we've heard from them around how they've been able to navigate, find the areas, the people that they need, even despite all the, the people here, I think that that's another big moment. We'll talk about the brand environment here and kind of what, what you were going for. It's maybe some things that you did in the environment that you thought were unique. Often at our events, probably others, you, you're in the expo environment, you've come through, you know, at a place like McCormick, which is so big, the walk from where you get off the, the buses to making your way in the keynote and you see the event brand, you've gone to registration, you're making your way now to the visionary keynote, and then you hit the door and it's all of a sudden Star Trek. Something very different than everything you've experienced. And I think we did a really good job to keep the that overall look and feel cohesive throughout the whole thing. People aren't uh, only used to um, consuming information in a kind of a classroom style. They're really, um, we consume it in all different ways throughout our life and you don't necessarily have to be um, you know in four walls to be able to consume it anymore you can consume it in the privacy of your own home you can come and enjoy the networking pieces but maybe you like to consume content in your hotel room and so you can do that or you can find a couch put your headphones on and just you know enjoy it, it kind of creates a conference your way uh, and really helps you choose your own adventure as opposed to kind of having to stick to an agenda. You touched on this already, there are a thousand sessions. Yeah. If there's depth, I mean, it's it. you may not get it here while you're here, but you're capturing all this content and they get access to it later. Well, we we believe very much in, in uh, audience, not just attendees. Um, audience centricity, not attendee centricity. Now that's not to say that the attendees, the, let me put it another way, attendees are a part of our audience, so, but they are a transactional subset of our audience. And to focus only on them is to miss the opportunity for the broader audience. Well, sometimes you have these situations where you can't make it to a session, you want to see what it's like. In this case, we have a very full conference, sometimes the rooms get crowded. We've actually also offered live streaming. So you can load up the second screening experience, you can look at the slides, or you can just press live. It takes you right into a live stream of that. You're now scaling the content so much more, Correct. right? Yes. I've always felt like you do these sessions and mm -hmm. maybe 30 people see it. Right. You've spent six months developing your session. Yes. Wouldn't it be great if 100,000 people viewed it exactly. right, around the world? Right. right? And that's, right. that is so helpful right. to do that. And, and that is um, a good point. It does make it more global uh, in nature. Content is not something that we hostage. It's something that we share. So Channel 9 is here broadcasting throughout the days, all, all week long. The studio behind us is broadcasting all day long. We had a pre and post keynote broadcast specifically for the online audiences where they actually got more content than the keynote room did because there were after keynote interviews with key presenters. Key and Q&A. Right, and like on, right, and so their questions were actually presented to some of the presenters, whereas the attendees in the keynote hall didn't get to ask those presenters questions. I manage the social and community mm -hmm. for the event. So I, there's a team of three. Yeah. and we actually have a social desk in the middle of the floor uh -huh. and um, people can see who's behind the handle yep. and get their questions answered in person or they can say hey we've been following you for six months this is great or hey we don't like how the transportation's going and we can say you know what we've been following the meme on Twitter and we're fixing it for you as event managers we used to program people from the moment they got up till the time they got went to bed you're actually helping them find places to eat dinner and find friends and things like that how do you see that as part of, part of your charter now? Yeah, so when I first started um, doing this role, I used to say, okay, here's the content, here's your keynote, and here's your foundational sessions, and it would be crickets. So then I'm like, well, here's where you get craft beer, and all of a sudden, Twitter would explode. We did a lot of pilots, um, so we, did, we pilot a lot of stuff here, so we're learning. Um, and one example is we did these mashups, um, so at lunch times. We wanted a large crowd of 22,000 to find others like them. So how do you do that? Well, at lunchtime, like today, we broke it up by industry. So we color-coded the tables. You could go, if you're, say, healthcare, go find others in healthcare and see how that works. This show sold out four weeks ago. And to many, that's very exciting. And we totally recognize and appreciate the passion that comes from selling out a show of this scope and scale four weeks ago. The Expo show floor sold out four months ago. But I have very mixed feelings about it. I personally am disappointed that we could not get more people into this venue. Yes. Um, and that we couldn't get more people into 
the content and the certification and the hands-on labs and the one-on-one -on -one conversations and the networking. But we wanted to ensure they had the best experience they could. At a show of this scope and scale, ensuring the best experience means you have to take a, a real critical look at certain things and say, you know, we're at a point where bringing more people in will weaken everybody's experience. I think now, now that we're here, it, it actually uh, shows that it worked really well. I'm getting a lot of good feedback from, from people that went to the other uh, events. That they're like, well, this is just a more premium version of the event I used to go to. Right. And they like the fact that, you know, even I'm so dedicated to one workload, and now I get this crossover content in there sometimes, they're like, that's actually interesting. And I, I like seeing the other people. I like meeting the other people. They are, I'm a developer, but I meet some IT pros, or I'm an IT pro or an architect, and you know, I get to talk to people that generally would not have gone to my dedicated conference. Uh -huh. um, so that's really what we're trying to achieve. Where does this go? Do you? Do, would it become a 40,000 person event in the future, or do you? I, I'd like to think. I, I'd like to think we become what the community needs. If the community, the community has already told us that more people want to come than we're able to attend, so we will be larger in the future. From the moment you enter, you know where you are. It's Microsoft. For the last year, we've been pioneering a brand new experience at Microsoft. A lot of it is just about creating the right experience for the attendee, for our customers. We took a really good swing at it, and I'm you know, really proud of where we've gotten so far. It was fun watching people come in, and they're like, oh, this, this is a new event. This, this is different.